Now that we've initialized the enemy ships, we need to update them every update call. So go to the update method. Scroll to the call to update cannonballs. Below that, add the following. Update enemies. Just like update cannonballs, this is a method that doesn't exist until we write it. Scroll down past the end of the update method and find the ending curly brace. Place your cursor just after it, add two new lines, and then type the following. Public void update enemies. Open curly brace. Once again, we're starting a new method. When defining methods in a class, it doesn't matter what order they go in, so we could really put this method anywhere. For readability's sake, though, it's a good idea to have it near the update method. Now, add the following code. For each game object enemy in enemies. Open curly brace. If open parenthesis enemy dot alive close parenthesis open curly brace enemy dot position plus equals enemy dot velocity. If open parenthesis exclamation point viewport rect dot contains open parenthesis new point open parenthesis open parenthesis int close parenthesis enemy dot position dot x comma open parenthesis int close parenthesis enemy dot position dot y close parenthesis close parenthesis close parenthesis open curly brace enemy dot alive equals false close curly brace just like the cannonballs we make the same moves move the enemy by its velocity and if it goes outside the screen, kill it. All well and good, but right now, the position, the velocity, and the alive flag aren't set. We haven't defined anywhere where they get set to any values at all. So as good as this code is, it won't do anything for us yet. We'll get to that in a moment. Before we do, though, close off this method. You need three more right curly braces. We have the beginnings of our enemy ships, an initialization call, and an update call. Now we'll make sure these enemy ships start out with some motion and proper position.